Hey, everybody. Welcome. My name is Bea Williams. I am the director of growth for Ben Kinney Companies, and I am so excited to be here because it's noon Pacific time on Wednesdays, and you know what happens every single noon like clockwork. We are doing our weekly agent training webinars, and today I am really excited to get started with Jeff Glover. For those of you who don't know Jeff, Jeff is a just an outstanding agent out of Detroit, Michigan, and and one of the things I'm a really big believer in on these weekly webinars is I like to bring practitioners on. I like to bring agents on that are doing the work in the trenches. That's why we have a lot of buyers agents and ISAs on, right? I love getting the big team leaders on and the CEOs. Those are fun treats. And for the most part, I just, I really like getting the people that are in the trenches, getting the objections thrown at them every day, right? And Jeff is one of those guys. He's kind of one of my Jeff, you're kind of my fallback ninja master. Like I could always bring you on and just get cold because you personally are bringing on over a hundred listings a year and That's your right. team is tracking at 65 listings a month. Yep. That's right. Yeah. That's just to pace that out. That's over 700 listings this year. In this listing scarce market. Yeah. Okay. Like, so. We have a lot that we can learn from you because that, that's absolutely incredible. So, so what we're going to do today, Jeff, that, that we talked about is we're going to kind of walk through your listing presentation. This isn't, this isn't a slide deck thing. We're not going to have you teach five points, whatever. You and I are going to dive in, you know, yeah. and we're going to effectively do a role play. We're going to break role play from time to time, but right. We're going to kind of walk through your listing presentation and and I guess what, what I'd love you to do is I'd love you to break in periodically with telling us why you do what you do. So, you know, maybe we can do it in segments, Jeff, and kind of walk through the different segments of the listing presentation and, and we'll just fill the hour. And then what I would encourage you guys to do, Hattie's monitoring Facebook. So if you have any questions or clarifications, go ahead and type it in Facebook, or if you're on Zoom with us, type it in Zoom. And then at the end of every section, you know, Jeff will just kind of jump in and and answer some questions if you're good with that. Yeah, I think taking it one segment at a time, having a discussion, and then I can kind of share with you the logic of here's why I do that. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, hey, Jeff, before we get going, one little, you know, propaganda, what can I say? Um, I, I, a lot of you guys heard our exciting news at Ben Kinney Companies this week. Um, our new brand, Place, which is replacing Ben Kinney Team, Experience Real Estate Team, and um, and Ben Kinney companies, uh, we're now branding at place. We just hired the president, former CEO of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, which is a really big uh, deal for us. His name is Chris Stewart and Chris Stewart has agreed to come on and do a one-on-one -on -one interview with me next Wednesday uh, for this webinar. So we're gonna invite some uh, special people to join us on that. And I, it's gonna be a, a very different and a very special Wednesday webinar for us to be to be able to interview the former CEO of Berkshire Hathaway and the now new incoming president of PLACE. And I'm really excited to have you guys uh, learn what I've been learning about him, his journey from being a salesperson to being a CEO and, and all the wonderful things that he has to teach. So I hope you guys join us a very, very special uh, Wednesday webinar next week. All right, Jeff. With that said, that's cool. That's exciting news, by the way. Really cool stuff. Very exciting. Yeah, thank you. All right, Jeff. Where do you, it's it, you have the you know I'm your seller. Uh, what do you want to? How who do you want me to be first of all? You want me uh, to be just, yeah, just being a internet lead referral. What? No, I would just say you. Why don't you be an expired? How about that? How about you're an expired? And okay. um, you know you've had it on the market before. So you, 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 oh, sorry, sorry. Hold on, hold on. I'm ready for some more music if you want to do that too. You just press one button and the music just went crazy. Okay, so I'm expired. So I don't know any more. So expired. that means you're going to be tough on me. All okay. right. Okay. Now, obviously, be realistic. I think sometimes during role plays, people are a little over the top tough. And it's like, okay, come on. That's not a real thing, right? So be tough, but not over the top. So, hey, and, and like you said, we'll, we'll chat. We'll have the presentation and then we'll stop and kind of dissect. 
So hey, yeah, thank you, obviously, for having me out and for the opportunity. I'm really looking forward to going to work for you. And if it's okay with you, I'd like to take a look through your home through the eyes of the buyers while I have you wait here for a few minutes and take a look at our plan of action. That way I can walk through the house without any sort of influence. And the reason why we do this is because a lot of times, well, not a lot of times, in all cases, when buyers are viewing homes, they're here with their buyer's agent and the seller isn't present. And so you don't have the opportunity to point out maybe certain things that you would point out as if you were to walk me through the house. So if it's all right with you, I'd like to take a look through the eyes of the buyer. I'm going to take a brief walk through, and then we'll come back and I'll meet you at the kitchen table. Does that sound fair? Yeah. So you don't want me to go with you? You, you want to just walk through the okay. house? No, no, no. You don't need to. In fact, it's almost better if you don't. Now, if you prefer, you most certainly can. Uh, but the reality is you won't be here when buyer's agents are walking through, will you? No. I no. Guess so therefore, if you want me to properly price the home, then you want me to walk through it without having you present. Make sense? Okay. Okay, right, sure. So I'm going to take a look at, through, at your home through the eyes of the buyers. While I do that, I'm going to have you wait here and have a, have a look at our plan of action and everything we're doing to sell homes. Sound fair? Okay, sounds good. Cool. Now, let me step out of the role play for a second. Uh, number one, I'm doing this for two reasons. Number one, for a little bit of time efficiency, because if I have you sit at the table and go through our plan of action then you're less likely to ask me the question, well, what are you going to do to sell homes? You just spent five, seven minutes reviewing a little bit about what we're doing to sell homes, number one. Number two, what do most sellers do when they walk a listing agent through the house? They're constantly talking up the bullet points of their house, in, in, in essence, building up its value. And so it makes it harder as agents to be real honest with them about the price when this seller is clearly thinking their home is worth more. Now, I get this all the time, and, and I want to make sure I put this out there because I know a lot of people who are watching might be saying, well, that's, that's a little awkward. I, I don't know if I feel comfortable doing that. If at all they give me pushback, I say, you know what? If you want to show me through, that's totally fine. Uh, I just thought it would kill two birds with one stone. You'd take a look at our plan of action, what we're doing. I'd take a look around, but if you want to walk me through, I've got no problem with that. Okay, I'm curious, Jeff, on that note. You may not know the answer, and it's okay. But is there a rough statistic in your head? If someone is uncomfortable with you walking through by yourself and, and they go with you, is there a conversion rate difference that you're automatically clocking? You know, like, are I, you less I, likely or more likely to convert? Well, it's not so much conversion. It's, it's more so uh, the price. It's more so getting the price wrong because you're more likely to give them a higher price because they, they just got done selling you on everything about their house. And how dare you come back with a price that's in the middle when I showed you everything we've done. So it's not so much conversion. It's more about getting a better price listing. Yeah, makes sense. So let's just pretend I did the walk around. I come back to the table. Hey, thanks again for having me out. Yeah, I'm excited about getting your home on the market and more importantly, getting it sold. And before we begin, I want to share with you, there's three things that's going to happen this afternoon. Uh, number one, assuming you like everything I have to say, you'll have the opportunity to put me to work for you. And I'd appreciate that. Or number two, you may decide that you, we don't agree on price or you don't like our plan of action. And you may say, you know what, this isn't, this isn't a good fit for me. And, and via, that happens sometime and, and that's okay if that's the case. Or number three, if for any reason I feel that I can't get you what you want within a reasonable time frame, meaning if I can't meet your expectation, I will actually turn down the listing. And that's okay too, right? I'll, you want me to be honest and upfront with you, don't you? Yes, for sure. Yeah. Perfect. Do you have any questions on that? No. 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 All right. So let's stop out of the role play for a second. So the reason we do that is because you are completely disarming them from any thought of, okay, he's just going to try to take my listing. He's going to try to take my listing. He's going to try to take my listing. It's almost, you're probably familiar with the takeaway in sales. It's a classic mm -hmm. sales technique. It's almost like when you take it away, it's like, well, wait a minute. No, come back. Why wouldn't you take my listing? Right? So it, it almost does the reverse of their thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Song and dance. Everyone wants my listing. So tell me, you know, give me your pitch, give me your spiel. And I'm like, Hey, if I get it, cool. If I don't, that's fine too. Life happens. Yeah. And so, it kind of sets them at ease and makes them, it, you can almost like see their shoulders kind of struggle. Like, okay, yeah, that sounds fair. Because that's not something they know, they're hearing from other agents because other agents are coming in and begging for their list. Yeah, I like that. Okay. 
So let's um, let's go ahead and jump back in. So let's review some of the questions I asked you over the phone, if that's okay. Now you said you were moving to. Let's just pretend you're a seller of mine in Detroit. You said you were moving down to Orlando. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Oh, nice. Good for you. And what takes you down to Orlando? A job. A job takes me yes. down to Orlando. <laughs> let, let me guess. Disney World. I hope it's Disney World. Uh, yes, it is Disney World. <laughs> Even better. All right. Well, you've got an opportunity to live permanently in Orlando and work at Disney World. Good for you. And when do you want to be in Orlando, ideally, like actually physically moved in? Well, yeah, that's a great question. It's May now. We'd like to be moved in in August so that we can kind of get situated before the kids start school in September. Oh, good. All right. So uh, be situated. Sorry, I'm just making notes. And by the way, I am I'm making notes exactly like this situated by August. Okay, got it. And I'm just curious, have you done any shopping down there? Do you already have a place? We, we have done some shopping. It's a pretty competitive market, but we're, we're comfortable enough that we'll be able to find a home um, once we sell ours. Okay. So we don't have one identified, but I think yeah. we'll find one. That's fair. And do you have any family down there? No, uh-uh. so it's so a big new just move a new, for us. New, new city. All right. Right. Cool. Right. I love it. I love it. And I know you had your market on on the mark or your home on the market before. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what that experience was like? Showings, offers, feedback. What were some of the things that buyers were saying? You know, it was really tough because everyone around us seems to be selling with multiple offers, and we didn't yeah. sell. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, our agent didn't tell us much. I, you know, um, I don't know what happened. Uh, I can't really tell you why it didn't sell. I know it wasn't priced because our house is way better than like almost every other home on the market. Mm -hmm. So it couldn't have been priced. So I just think, you know, maybe, maybe it just wasn't a great agent. I don't know. Yeah. And sometimes that's the case. You know, uh, we find it's usually a combination of, price, marketing, and condition. And sometimes it's one of the three, or sometimes it's all three of those. And based on my viewing, your home show is great. So I don't think it was condition. Uh, it's possible that, yeah, it was probably a mix of price and marketing. So you agree that could have been the case then? Well, I don't think it was price, no. I really okay. don't. Okay, yeah. so you actually think it was the agent then mostly? I think it was the marketing and, and maybe the agent, yeah. yeah. Okay. And what were they, what were they doing that you thought was effective and what were they doing or what should they have been doing in your mind? Mm, I think the pictures were just okay. I mean, they were fine. I don't know what websites it was on. You know, some of my friends could see it on Zillow, some couldn't. Yeah. And, um, you know, they were never at the showings. It was always just the other agents and the, and their buyers uh, and I never really heard back what people thought about the home. I didn't yeah. really know how many people came through the open houses or anything. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. And by the way, I'm making notes on things you had a problem with stepping out of the role play here for a second. So that way, when I go into talking about what could be different, or when you ask me what's going to be different, I make sure to highlight those specific mm. you had and be the solution to those complaints. Should I have given any other objections or complaints? Is there anything that I missed? No, no, no. That's good. You'll, you'll, you'll have an opportunity to give me some good objections. <laughs> um, all right, good. So jumping back in. So totally understand, you know, we're struggling to get some feedback, had decent showings though. It seemed like, uh, via, did you have any written offers? We had one low ball offer early on. Um, but that was it. One low ball. And that was early on in the listing. Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, what was the offer? Uh, what was my house listed at? <laughs> you know, just say, uh, my, we're in Detroit, keep it under 300. <laughs> oh, honey. Okay. God, that's a down payment. <laughs> 300. So um, yeah, well, as you know, our house was listed at 300 and, and the, the offer came in at 275. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And how did you respond to that offer? Did you counter? Did you, you know, well, we say, said, absolutely not. Absolutely mm -hmm. not. And did your agent give you any guidance of, hey, why don't we go back at this? Well, our agent really thought we should take it. So I kind of, at that point, thought that they were no longer really representing us. You know, I felt like they, you know, they, they really thought we should take that offer. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. And I know sometimes, you know, agents are looking to just make a quick buck or get a quick sale. So hopefully that wasn't the case. Um, and I'm curious, 
I know you said you didn't have any other written offers as the listing went on. Um, did you have any conversations with your agent as to, okay, here's why it's not selling and here's what we need to do to get it sold? Yeah, she just kept wanting us to lower our price to, you know, right around 280, 275. And, you know, it, we are, it's not price. That's not why we didn't sell. So we didn't do that. Okay, fair enough. Oh, I'm such a nightmare. God, I hate hearing myself. By the way, you notice I'm not responding to any hate. I'm just kind oh, of it's you. hard. Uh, and so, all right, that sounds fair. And uh, obviously the listing has since expired and you're in the process of interviewing agents for the job, right? Mm -hmm, that's right. Because we got to get you down to Orlando by August. That's right. Perfect. So, uh, oh, one last question I have for you before I get to the next step. Um, besides for us reaching out to you, because I know you probably got a lot of calls from us and a lot of calls from a lot of agents in town. Have you heard of us anywhere else or has anyone recommended us to you? Yeah. Um, uh, Susie Smith recommended us uh, okay. to you. Um, and then when you reached out, I, you know, that was too, too, things brought you to us. So. Yes, perfect. And by the way, stepping out of the role play for a second, I'm always asking that because what you're doing in your mind, you're basically, you're retelling yourself why you should listen to what I have to say, right? Because mm. you're thinking of the reason why you set the appointment. You're thinking of the person that referred us or the reviews you read online or the billboard you saw or whatever. So I'm always, even though I know the source, it might say on my sheet, um, you know, ISA set appointment expired, uh, dash past client worked with so-and-so I'll know all of that. And I'll still ask. And besides, uh, us reaching out to you, is there anywhere else that you heard of us or how, because I want you to remember, I want you to fresh your memory of why I'm here. Cause then you're more likely to listen to what I have to say. Okay. So, all right, good. Um, last couple of things more so about your house. Um, I just want to confirm a couple of things. Uh, I counted three bedrooms. That sound right? Yep, that's right. So now I go into like home fact checking. Uh, two and a half baths. Is that right? Yep. 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 Uh, you had a finished lower level. Nice job. That looked great. Uh, and it looks like you guys recently redid the master bath. Is that right? Yeah. 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 A year ago. Yeah. And and it looks like you bought the house um, five years ago for two hundred thousand. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. And do you know how much you've put into the home between now and, and now and then? I think the master remodel was about um, uh, 20,000. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how much a master. Uh, and then we did some landscaping in the backyard. So probably about 25,000. Okay. And stepping out of the role play for a second, I'm not asking this information to determine what your home's worth. I'm asking this information to try to get inside your head and find out what you think you want for your house based on what you put in it. Because most sellers want what they paid plus what they put in it plus X amount on top of that. So it helps me when I'm talking to you about pricing to know what you put into the home. Make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So awesome. Okay, cool. So thank you for that. Looks like about 50,000 into it. Perfect. All right, good. Well, there's really only a couple things that we need to discuss now. Uh, number one is, of course, the price that we set on your home in terms of the marketing and, and what we're going to use to drive people to your property. And number two is the timing of getting your home sold. Have, are you familiar with the timing analysis? No, I don't know what that is. So the reason why, we, why it's important that we talk timing is because um, I'm guessing, like most sellers, you're not, you don't really want to move twice. Yeah. I don't want to move twice. We, okay. we would like to. Yes, exactly. So that way you can get into the new place. Perfect. Well, if it's all right with you, Via, I'd like to start off with the timing analysis. I want to make sure we're both on the same page and that we meet your timing expectations. Because what I've found in a lot of cases is that timing in, in I'm sorry, in some cases, timing is almost just as important, if not more important than the actual money, because we need to time this right. doesn't matter, you know, in terms of, of what we're going to get for your house. We're going to get what the market says the home's worth, but timing is a lot of times more important, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. So you want to be in, and by the way, I'm opening up our, our plan of action uh, to, the, to our home sale timeline, and I'm, I'm writing down there the drop dead date. Now, I want to go back to this for a second. You said you want to be situated by August. Now you don't have to give me an exact date, but do you mean like, you know, you're, you're doing the landscaping and you're replacing the curtains and all that by the end of August or really when is, yeah. when is the drop dead date that you'd like to be in by? 
Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I think that we were hoping we could buy a house in July that would close in August. And, you know, even if it's at the end of the month, but we're, we're at least our closets are put together so that we can so kind of start school. school. So why don't we say August the 15th? Just pick okay. it up. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I'm writing down 15 as a date to where you're, you know, giving keys to somebody and you're moving into your new and you're you're moving out of state. Right. You need to stay here in Michigan until at least August. Right. Yeah, that'd be great. So be, because times are so great for sellers right now, we are in many cases able to negotiate a certain amount of time in the home after closing. Typically, I can get 30 days. If you start asking for more than 30 days, then it does start hurting your home value a little bit. Now, in some cases, we get a lot of days and a lot of money. But in some cases, a buyer will say, well, if the seller needs 60 days, then we're offering them 5000 less. So let's just say for sake of exercise that we're just going to get you 30 days in the home after closing. Does that sound fair? Yeah, that would be great. So you would say it would maybe close in July and then we could yeah. live in it until that house closes. That would be perfect. Our last agent didn't say that. That's yeah, great. Yeah, Mid-July. So we can time that appropriately. And by the way, stepping out of the role play for a second, the reason why I'm using 30 days is because aside from this crazy, ridiculous market right now, that's pretty standard. And I know some markets, it's maybe two weeks. And I know some markets in the country, they don't do post occupancy at all. For us, 30 is pretty average. So jumping back in. So then that puts the closing date about 7.15. Now, obviously you're hearing like crazy homes are flying off the shelves, right? Yeah, for sure. But ours didn't. Yeah, I know. Well, and that's why I'm here, obviously. So in order for your property to sell by July 15th, we still have to think about the amount of time it's going to take to get a mortgage approved and get a buyer to a closing table because not every buyer, unfortunately, is buying homes with cash. And do you know how long it takes right now to get a mortgage done from start to finish? I was told like 30 days. Yeah, 30 is a really good case scenario. Uh, sometimes, you know, there's some inspection issues or sometimes there's appraisal issues. So the whole process kind of gets, gets put on pause while we negotiate some stuff. So to be safe, why don't we give it 40 days just in terms of timing? Is that fair? Yeah, that makes sense. So then that puts us at June the 5th for an accepted agreement. And today is May the 26th. So essentially, we have to get this home on the market quickly so we can get an agreement accepted by June the 5th so we can close by July the 15th so you can be moving down to Orlando the middle of August. We got to get moving. Oh, wow. I didn't realize we had to get started now for all of that. That's... And, you know it's, and it's interesting you say that because a lot of sellers hear that things move so quickly. And, you know, so we got to, you know, we don't want to be moving tomorrow. So they don't hire an agent right away or they they put their plans off. And then next thing you know, they realize they actually still have 60 days, even with things moving that quickly. Can so, I pause the role play really quick, Jeff? Please. Because I want everyone to hear something Jeff did really, really well is at every single question, because we all know what he was doing. He's just reverse engineering the timeline, right? We all do it. But I go too fast. My aha is I go way too fast. What Jeff does masterfully is every single date, he looks up and he gets my agreement. And then he goes back to the next date. And then he goes, does that make sense? Yes, yes. And like, we're locked, you know, yes. And then he goes down. And I just wanted to pause on that, Jeff, because I don't know how aware you are. You probably are aware. But I think everyone should be aware that you're doing that. You're getting agreement at every micro segment of your presentation, and it's really skillful. So I just wanted to make sure all of our agents caught that. A series of small yeses makes yes. the yes at the end that much easier. Yes. All right, so let's jump back in. So that means we, we don't have a lot of time, so we got to get moving. So you're comfortable with that time frame before we move on to price? Yeah, I mean, we just, we need to get scooting and get it back on the market, yeah. Okay, good. All right, so then the only issue really left to talk about is pricing. Now, I know you had it on the market for, um, I think we said $299, $299.9, you had an offer at $275. Let's take a look at what's gone on since your listing's been on the market. And by the way, I don't have any comps in front of me. But at this point, what I would do is I would pull out the sold. So let's take a look at what has sold while your home's been on the market. These are the three to five sales. I never have more than three to five because you just confuse the heck out of them. These are the three to five sales. And I put them upside down for me, meaning right side up for you. And for those that maybe don't read upside down easily, just bring two copies 
give her a copy, I'll take a copy. Let's take a look at what's sold since your home's been on the market. And I'll first show you a home, You and I'll usually start with one that's a dog, right? So I'll get you, we'll get, I start with the dog because then you're more inclined to say, yeah, he's right. That is a dog. Finally, an yeah. agent standing up for my yeah. value. And then you're more likely to listen to the next one and the next one after that. So I'll start with the dog. Say now, now, good news is I'm sure you you're familiar with this house over here on Banana Street. Yeah, yeah. For 250, I mean, you've seen the inside. I'm sure you saw the photos. Oh, it was so ugly. I didn't even want to go in. They gave it away. They gave it yeah. away. That good news is that's not even going to show up in an appraisal. We don't have to worry about that. Let's take oh, a look good. at them yeah. a little bit more similar. Now, this one here over on Apple Street. Uh, you know, I, I know it's a little lower than the 299 level, but I don't, have you seen this house? Did you go through the photos? No, I haven't seen this one. Let me see. Let me see Very all the photos. Bathrooms. Very similar bathrooms. Uh, they updated their kitchen. They updated their master bath and, and look what mm -hmm. price they got. Yeah. I think that's the, I think that's the Jones's house. Yeah. I think I know that one. Yeah. And, and huh. They, and by the way, stepping out of the role play for a second, I'm actually, if I had comps and you had them in advance, you know, we would, I would actually be saying, how many bedrooms do they have? And I'd make you say for how many bathrooms and, and look what price they got. And I'd make you say the price out loud, 280. Yeah. And this one, this one's considered pretty similar to yours. Now, and I set it aside and I pause. Now, Via, now let's take a look at what is the Taj Mahal of the neighborhood, the graded, the highest price sale in the neighborhood in the last 90 days. Let's take a look at this one. I lay it in front of you. How many bedrooms? Four. Yep. How many bathrooms? Yep. Three. Yep. And and square footage, pretty similar to yours. Now, this one had a you have a finished basement and it shows well. This is a finished walkout. So mm. you know, this is like walk right out into the pool area. It looks great. And look what price they got. Just say two ninety. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, two ninety. Well, I heard they had to move. I heard they. I heard they got relocated, and or they got a divorce. I heard they got a divorce, and they had to move. So. Yeah. Uh, and and that's and that might have been the case. And I'm curious, when you go to buy a home in Orlando, what's going to be more important to you, the market value or the seller's needs? Well, I mean, just finding a house we like. So I guess the value. The value, right. Meaning um, you're, you're, if a seller says, I need this amount because of this, does that have any bearing on what you offer or is it really more so what the market says it's worth? Hmm. I mean, it might, if there's multiple offers, then it might have, it might be important. Yes. And if we're in a multiple offer situation, then certainly getting as much information we can to arm you with more information to create a better offer might be the case, especially today. But in most situations, do you think the pra the appraiser cares why they were selling? Probably not, no. And appraisals are still taking place, aren't they? Yeah, and I'm hearing they're low a lot yeah, right low now. Buyers are paying over appraised value. And our goal is to put you in a situation where we can get you over appraised value. But the reality is buyers are only willing to pay over appraised value on homes that are priced to sell. Let me show you a few of the actives. So now I'm moving the solds aside. Now I've got three to five actives, okay? Um, and let's just pretend to save time. We skip through doo -doo 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 -doo, the dog, the this, the that, the that. So based on that, and I fan it all out in front, solds, actives, based on everything we've covered, what price do you feel we should use to create value in the eyes of the buyer to get someone to buy your home versus the competition? Well, I don't know. Uh, I mean, say 290. I guess maybe 290. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and by the way, I'm, I appreciate you being willing to come down a little bit. And I think that's something that we, that, that most buyers are going to appreciate, right? They see you're listed with a new company at a new price and they're going to appreciate that you, you are, you know, uh, uh, open to what the market says. And if it's okay with you, do I have permission to be honest with you about your home's value and what it's going to take to get it sold? Yeah, of course. We want to sell it. So I'm pretty convinced based on everything I'm seeing that I can get your home into a multiple offer situation if we price it at 275 and hold firm. I'd rather see you get two, three offers and turn them all down than never get an offer at all.
And putting it at 290 is not enough of a change to cause a buyer to say, you know what, let's go give that house a chance. So by the way, at 275, I know that's, you know, hey, that was our offer, no way. You know, you have a better chance today at getting 285 or 290 for your house by pricing it at 275 than you do by pricing it at 290. Can you believe that? Sounds well, back. I mean, our last agent, I mean, I could have already sold it at 275. That doesn't make sense yeah. to me because our last agent, you know, got an offer right away at 275. Yeah. And, and you know, you've, you're probably familiar with days on market of a home, right? Yeah. I, I mean, how long it's been on the market. Yeah. So when you go shop for homes in Orlando, uh, what do you think one of the big questions will be when you're shopping for real estate down there? when you ask your, your buyer's agent, you know, for advice. Yeah. I have noticed that, that when a house has been on the market a while, we're like, what's wrong with it? (laughs) Days on market via is the enemy to a home's value. So you see if the number one question or the number one or number two question that buyers are asking is, well, how long has this been on the market? Why are they asking that? Because the perception is if it's been on the market for a long time, they're not going to be able, they're, they're going to come in with a lower offer. And so we can start high. A lot of people like to start high, but then we get low ball after low ball offer. Wouldn't you want your house to be in a bidding war? Well, I mean, if we listed at 275, will people, would we potentially get multiple offers because it has been on the market for so long? Yeah, and that's the beauty of when you relist with a new brokerage and a certain amount of time has passed it stores zero days on the market. Now, people can go research and they can see that you've been listed with another company and so forth. But when you list at a new price with a new brokerage, not only is it new to the market, but it's in a lower price bracket. And price brackets usually go in increments of 25,000 at a time. That's why if you were to say, well, Jeff, I love you know, everything you have to say and, and you know, Susie says great things about you, but I really wanna try 280. I'm going to tell you at that point, you might as well list it at 300 because there's not really that much of a difference between 300 and 280 because it's still in the same price bracket. Did you know that the most popular searched price range in your neighborhood is between two and 275,000? Were you aware of that? No. That's why all the comparables that I showed you were in the 250 to 275 range. So what that means then is when you go to 275, you're going to put it in front of a whole new pool of buyers that didn't even know your home was for sale before. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's just, that's $25,000 lower. And then, you know, I'm just, we really, really wanted to get 280, 285, you know, ideally like 290. We knew we probably wouldn't get 300. Mm -hmm. Oh, the truth comes out after a meeting, huh? But, Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we, I'm nervous if we list it for 275 to get multiple offers. What if we don't get them? Do we, are we required to take an offer at 275? You can actually, there's no, there's no rule that says you can't raise the price of your home. You, in fact, if it doesn't work, you can fire me and go hire someone else at 300,000. That's how confident I am in this 275 strategy with our, with our marketing behind it. Hmm. So why don't we do this? Why don't we go through the paperwork? I'll make sure you understand exactly how showings are going to work. I'll make sure you understand exactly um, how we're going to reach out for feedback after showing. So that way, you know exactly what buyers are saying. And hopefully by the weekend or by the first weekend we're on the market, we have you in a multiple multiple offer situation. Are you it's ready? just tough. Well, I'm just struggling because we've had three agents, you know, talk to us like this and every single one of them was way higher than you. So I just don't understand that. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're all using the same comparables, aren't we? Some of them are same, some are different. Yeah. Well, I'm showing you three to five actives and solds in your neighborhood here. So I would hope that they were using your neighborhood as well, because I'm pricing your home and showing you comparables just as an appraiser would. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what I say your home's worth. It doesn't matter what you say your home's worth. It actually doesn't even matter what the buyer says it's worth. It all comes down to what the appraiser says it's worth. It's just confusing when I've had so many agents come and and this is, you know, this is a lower price than than we were expecting. So I think we need to think about things. 
Yeah, and it is a big decision. And I, I'm with you on that. I, I would want to give it some serious thought as well. And if it's all right with you, I've actually brought along some examples of some specific sellers who also said the exact same thing you just did, meaning, hey, I don't know about this pricing at lower and getting a multiple offer situation. So let me share with you, and I pull out a packet of five, six, 10, 15, however many in your community of homes that I've sold for over the asking price. Oh, you, you know the street here? Yeah, look at yeah. They, they listed at 299.9. Now, of course, it's bigger. And it has a walkout. So it's a totally different neighborhood. But look what they got. Yeah. Right? Or whatever. Right? So now I'm showing you examples. They don't even have to be yours, you know, for stepping out of the role play for a second. For people that are watching this and they're like, well, I don't have a ton of those examples. Use your offices. Use your teams. Use other agents. I even will bring other agents sales in the neighborhood and show them examples of how things went for over asking. So that way you're more likely to trust me on the strategy. Yeah. So yeah now, that's, now that you've seen good. these examples, you can see the power of pricing it right and getting into a multiple offer situation. Can't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And getting into a multiple offer situation gives you one word. And do you know what that is? What? Leverage. And can I tell you why leverage is a seller's best friend today? Yeah. Because when you have leverage, you can ask a buyer, you can demand a buyer to pay over appraised value. You don't gain leverage when a home has been sitting on the market for a long time. In fact, you lose leverage. So if you would trust me on this, I will give you the opportunity after two weeks, you can say, Jeff, your strategy didn't work, you're out. Let's go ahead and price it at 275, hold firm at that price, and we'll get the bidding war started right away, shall we? Well, I think we need to think about it, Jeff. I appreciate all your time. Here, but. Sure, yeah. So at this point in time, normally during the meeting, uh, a seller is either signing paperwork with me or they have additional questions. So I totally, you know, like I said in the beginning, you might like me, you might not, um, but let's figure out what those questions are since we're here and your time is valuable. So what other questions do you have for me or what is it specifically that you'd like to think over? I just think we need, you know, we've had, you're our fourth agent that we've met with. And I think we need to just, you know, talk about it and, and think about it. Yeah. A little bit more. You know what? Listen, it is, it is a big decision. And um, I would want you to give it some serious thought, especially some in private. So why don't we do this? Um, my phone's been ringing off the hook in my pocket here. It's on vibrate or silent, let's just say. My, I've got some messages to return. I'll step outside and return some of those phone calls. 10, 15 minutes, however much time you need. Just wave me in around the front door when you're ready to sit down and chat a little bit further. Fair enough. And I start to stand up and I go walk away right away because they won't. If I start to stand up and start walking away, they're less likely to stop me. But if I wait for you to respond, then you're going to say, no, no, no. We need more than just, you know, just a few hours. So hmm. let's just pretend you say, no, no, no. We, I'm sorry, a few minutes. No, no, no. We need more than just a few minutes. We need, you know, probably, I just think we probably need to sleep on it, Jeff. Okay. Yeah. I can appreciate that. So why don't we do this then? Because I want you to be more comfortable about this decision, especially if you're going to give it some serious thought tonight. I'll walk you through all the paperwork. So, you know, from start to finish exactly uh, what, what it's going to look like in terms of how we're handling showings, how the lockbox situation is going to work, um, you know, er everything in the details of the contract and we'll fill everything out. We'll get it signed and ready to go. I won't submit anything until you tell me yes. But that way, at least since we're here, since you, you feel I can sell your home, don't you? I mean, yeah, I think, I think probably, I think all of you guys can. Yeah. And I know you're a little nervous about the strategy of pricing, but I think you get the re the benefits of doing it now, right? Yeah, I think that's what we kind of need to talk through. Good. A bit. So then I'm, I'm going to suggest that we go through and fill everything out, get it ready to go. You take the night to sleep on it. You call me in the morning and say, Jeff, sorry, we're going another direction. I'll bring the paperwork back or I'll rip it up. Or if you say, hey, Jeff, let's do this because we're kind of running out of time. Based on this timeline, we got to get moving. Fair enough? Well, what do you want me to say? I mean, at this point, what happens usually? Um, well, you know, you haven't asked me what we charge yet. Oh, sorry. Gosh, I'm so focused on. Thank you. God. Okay. What is wrong with me, by the way? Um, like, yeah. 
Um, yeah, Jeff, I mean, um, it's, you know, what do you charge? Yeah, great question. So you have a couple options and um, your commission, our commission ranges anywhere from five to 7%. Uh, it ranges from 5%, of course, if you were sticking here in Detroit and buying a home with us, or if you were, uh, if we are double ending the property, meaning we don't have to share in the commission with another agent, you can have a commission as low as 5%. Now, the good news is we happen to double end a lot of listings because of all the marketing we do. Uh, most sellers opt for our standard 6% plan, which has been around for years. I'm sure you're familiar with that. And some sellers actually say 7% because they want to offer out a bonus to the buyer's agent. So either one of those is fine. Most end up choosing six. What do you think would be best for you? Well, the other agents we met with, they were at four and a half to 5%. Hmm. Wow. Four and a half to five. Really? Yeah. And, and is that something that they just kind of came out with and said, that's their commission? Or did you negotiate that down a little bit? Uh, no, they all just kind of came out with that. That's what they're all charging. It doesn't seem like anyone's charging 6% anymore, actually. Yeah. I'm really surprised to hear that because, you know, a good, strong agent today should be mostly concerned about a seller's net. You agree with that, right? What do you mean by seller's net? Meaning most money in your pocket. Right. Yeah. So I'm concerned with putting the most money in your pocket. Can I tell you why that is? Yeah, of course. Because if I put more money in your pocket than the other guys, chances are you're going to refer me to your friends. Your neighbors are going to love me, right? They're going to love the, the highest sales price in the neighborhood in the last six months. I'm all about getting you top dollar for your home, which ultimately will put more money in your pocket. There are a lot of agents out there that are also more about fast sales and discount brokers and so forth. And they're offering a lower commission. Their focus isn't generally about selling the home for a lot of money. It is usually a discount commission to get a listing really quick. At the end of the day, getting you 5% over your ask price is a lot more than 1% savings in commission, isn't it? Well, it's just that, yeah, but it's just that, you know, a lot of these guys were at like 280, 285 with a lower commission. And so that's actually what was going through my head this whole time is that you charge 6% and you want to go at 275 and they all want to go higher and charge less. So I think I'd make more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I can certainly understand where your thought would come in on that. And to me, if I'm in your shoes, I would be kind of torn, right? You know, they're saying they can get me more and they're charging less. Like, hello, Jeff, come on. Why would I even list with you, right? Yeah, I mean, I I know you've sold a lot of homes, but I, I'm kind of wondering, yeah. Yeah, and so what I've brought along with me is because during the prequal, I asked you who else you're meeting with. What I've brought along with me is actually a, a MLS market report. And what it shows is the results of myself and the other couple agents that you're considering. And a couple of things that I want to point out to you, of course, they're great agents. Good for you for picking some great ones. Um, no matter who you hire, I'm sure one of us will get the home sold. Uh, but I want to share with you this little category, and it's called list price to sales price ratio. And so you can see us on there, and it looks like I'm averaging sellers 99.3% of the asking price right now. And this other agent you're considering is at 97.2, and the other one's at 96.8. So if they're reducing their commission by a half a percent or 1% and you hire them, how much are you really saving? Hmm. See, with hmm. me, I'm all about getting you in a situation where you can be entertaining multiple offers and have leverage. You have to have leverage as a seller today. So I showed you the examples of the sellers who did go for that option. And obviously they've all moved on and have a lot more money in their pocket than they had anticipated. And I'd love to put you in that same situation. So why don't we get started, shall we? Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, I was gonna I can't say- I believe I forgot to ask you how much you charge. No, yeah, no, that was great. So what, what are the common objections that you are getting right now, Jeff? Did I hit some of them? Did I, what did I miss besides, besides well, the, main one, the only other one that I get a lot right now because things move so fast is why is your contract still 90 days? Why is your contract still 120 mm. days? So quite honestly, if they're highly motivated and I know the listing's going to sell, I just write in there that they can cancel at any time after 30 days if they're dissatisfied. Yeah, for sure. Okay. What but other objections? I'm still not getting out of my habit of taking 120 day listings because there's going to be a time in the near future where, gosh, all of a sudden 
we took a listing and I thought it was going to be multiple offer situations and it's not. What now? Oh my gosh, I only got a week left on the listing. So we still take them for 120 days. And I just write in there, if they're dissatisfied anytime, they can cancel after 30 days. Okay, that's good. We got a really, really good question um, from Kathleen Novak, which I like. And she said, you know, staying on our role play a little bit. She said, Jeff, did you recommend 275 because that's the, the price of the previous offer? Or, you know, is that theoretically, you, you actually did the CMA yeah. and came up? Yeah, so okay. no, I, I'm just, I picked that number really actually because of the price bracket, right? So let's just say mm -hmm. I thought it was worth okay. 280. I'm still saying 275 because I want to get you into that lower price bracket. Now, it helped that you got an offer for that. It actually doesn't hurt. In, in, a, in a situation like this, it actually helped that you did because as much as you're saying, well, I had an offer for that and I turned it down. You're actually telling me like you would love to have that offer again if you could, especially if it was mm -hmm. several months ago and you're an expired listing. You would take that offer in a heartbeat. You're not going to tell me that, but that's what you tell me by indirectly saying that. Yeah, you're right. That's a really good point. Um, Kelly Black's asking, um, uh, do you put the dollar amount of net proceeds in front of them when comparing other brokers' results? Do I put the dollar amount? Of, no, I love that one though. I mean, that, that would take a little extra time to figure out, but yeah, I mean, you know, just do their average price point times the percentage. Yeah. I love that. That's yeah. a great. Idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else did I not object that I should have? Or no, I think on? that was it. I mean, you hit on commission, obviously thinking it over. Um, you know, we just talked about length of contract that, that was a very normal appointment. Yeah. Yeah, it was for me. Besides the 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 fee, uh, the the objections I use, by the way, here in Seattle, Washington, is almost as far as you could get from Detroit. Besides for getting the commission, um, that that's what I get, right? Yep. The, the, so yeah, price obviously price is an objection, and you know I look at prices. Listen, if they're not understanding of price, and you know I, I hate when agents say, "Oh, well, they went with someone else because they listed it higher." No, no, no you didn't do a good job presenting price. I spend, as you saw, 80% of the presentation on getting the price right and making sure you yeah. price. Because That's an aha for me. are won and lost in two areas. Number one, how well you present price. And number two, how well you handle their objections. Yeah, you're right. You are 100% right, yeah. Um, I have a couple follow-up questions. So, and, and Kim's story actually has a really good question. I'll start with that one. How do you get them to tell you the other agents that you're interviewing? She says that she struggles sometimes getting that information out of them. And I have too. Yeah. So if I don't get it during the prequel, cause I'll, I'll just ask, Oh, if you don't mind me asking who else are you meeting with? Watch. Oh, well, why is that important? Well, because I know a lot of agents will come out and say that they're the best in your neighborhood or they're number one at this. And, and I just like to do some fact checking. And so would it be beneficial to you in your decision making if I prepared a report showing my statistics and the statistics of the other two agents you're meeting with? This will be a neutral side-by-side -side comparison right from the MLS. They have access to this as well. Would that be helpful in your decision making if you had that black and white information? Yeah, I love that. I love the way you phrase that question. That, that feels more collaborative to me. I like that a lot. Okay. Um, uh, let's talk about various closes really quick before I move on to some other questions. So I liked your close. Hey, I'm going to go step out for 15 minutes. Um, I like your close. You're going to fill out the paperwork. What other closes might you use? Um, sorry, I was just telling my uh, Dylan to call an Uber because we got to head to the airport in a few. Oh, um, no problem. So I'm sorry. Can you repeat that one? My mistake. Yeah, yeah, no problem. And by the way, I want to thank uh, Jeff is actually traveling right now and uh, graciously agreed to do this webinar with a hard stop in a few minutes. So we're going to we're going to wrap up here in the next few minutes. But um, uh, what other closes do you use, Jeff? You use the look, I'm going to step out for 15 minutes. You use yep. the um, I, let's fill out the paperwork and sleep on it. What else? Yeah. So if everything's going well, my favorite one is this. So, um, Thea, what, what is the best number to reach you on for showings? Oh, okay. Then you start giving me your number. Is there another number or a secondary number that we should call now? If it's a husband and wife or whatever, that's perfect. Now I ask, which one of you would like to handle the showings with a big smile? Because yeah. once they say, well, I don't want to deal with the showings. All right. Bob, that's going to be you. All right, Bob, what's the best number to reach you on for our first showing? 
yeah. and then you're giving me the phone numbers and then I have the listing at that point. So that's probably my most common one, but usually it's just simple. Are you ready to put me to work for you? Yeah. Okay. It, 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 let's talk about ratios a little bit. So, you know, it, how many listing appointments do you go on every year versus, you know, how many are you getting ish? So uh, a typical month for me is going to be seven to 10 listings personally um, taken. So I usually go on about 15 a month. So I think okay. about 66%, 70%, you know, a bad month for me will be 60%. A good month for me about be about 75. Um, I still go on a lot of our ISA appointments. I still go on a lot of expireds. I still go on a lot of FISBOs. Your gone on to taken ratio is going to be lower with those, obviously than like say database or someone that responded yep. to advertising. But yeah, I'd say a good, sure. good rule of thumb for me is I'm usually two thirds yeah. Okay. That, that's great. And I think it's also really important for people to hear that you're not saying 99%, right? What, what Jeff's saying, everybody is, and it's what I, I preach on the mountaintops. This is an appointment sport. Everything we do in this business is geared towards the appointment. Half of my webinars are about either how to get the appointment or how to, what to do when you get there. Right, Jeff? You're, I mean, it's, it's at 90 plus percent. You're not going on enough. You're not going on enough. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. What are your top three sources, Jeff? So uh, our top three to four sources, number one, actually, it's a new one over the last four years. It's Sphere of Influence, Past Clients, and our Exchange Database. Uh, our number two source is Prospecting for Sale by Owners and Expireds. Our number three source is Advertising, Billboards, Radio, TV. And our number four source is internet, actually buyer leads that have homes to sell. And our fifth source is agent to agent referrals. Yeah. Okay. Are you willing to share anything that you talked about today, timeline, anything like that? Uh, some things, yes. I saw that in the chat. So we have a listing mastery group, uh, people that pay for a listing mastery program, and we promise them we will never share all of the materials with everyone. So yes, I, I will get you some, uh, some okay. of the stuff that in our listing presentation. I just can't share all. So for all of you guys who are registered, we'll, we'll follow up with you on that. Uh, last question, then we're going to let you go to the yeah. airport. We so appreciate your time because uh, I think it's a great one. Jan is asking, look, she said, you know, I made the comment, hey, we have to think about this. Uh, if you find out both decision makers can't be present, do you still go to the appointment? Ooh, that's a great one. So my response is do not go unless both decision makers are present or if there's a, a circumstance that you can't overcome it because what happens is you end up presenting the same information twice. If you even get a shot, what happens in a lot of cases is, you know, let's say you're the second or third agent. The first agent got to meet with both of them and the second and the third agent only got to meet with one. So who do they end up going with? The one that got to meet with both of them. So I really try to avoid that. So how I avoid it is like this. Oh gosh, let's just say we're on the phone. Oh, I didn't realize you both were going to be there. And, and, and that's okay. I understand. I've got some flexibility in my schedule. If you don't mind me asking, when's your husband going to be back in town? And I'm just oh, trying to reset the appointment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, I lied. I have one more question. Because okay. uh, I, I know what my answer is, and but and I think I know what yours is, but then, then we'll wrap. If they say, hey, we're going to interview three agents and you were referred to us by by uh, Susie Smith, right? Um, and they say, you know, we're going to meet with everybody on Saturday. Do you want to get in first, second, or third? Well, it depends on their personality style. So if it's a high D or a high I, I want to go first. If it's a high S or a high C, I want to go last. High Ds and high I's make faster decisions. The S's and, and the analyticals want to, well, the amiables want to be loyal to all appointments and the analyticals want all their information before they hire anybody. So I'm going to go last on those two. Okay. Close this out with your script. When you want to close a D, high D or high I right away, first appointment, and you're going to offer to cancel the appointments and call the other agents. What does that sound like? Oh, well, listen, at the end of the day, I know you've got a lot of great options and you feel I can sell your home, right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. So why don't we do this? I know you're busy. I'll save you some time. All of those other agents that you're considering, I'm going to do them a solid and I will call them as a professional courtesy to you. And I will give them the first opportunity to bring a buyer by to your home. They're going to have the best of both worlds. Can I tell you how? Yeah. How? Yeah. 
because they're going to get to make the same 3% that I'm making and they're not going to have to do any of the work. So you're actually kind of doing them a favor. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. So you'll I'll call them for us right now. We can get started and hopefully they'll bring a buyer by and then it's going to be win-win, won't it? Oh, that would be great. Yeah, that'd be great. Just cancel all those appointments. We we already, okay. Susie That's spoke good. highly of you. So. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Okay, perfect. All right, good. All right, all right Jeff, go catch your Uber. We appreciate you so much. And we yeah. will get everybody uh, some great resources. And everybody thank Jeff. And he's your guy in Detroit. Thank you, my friend. Thank you.